Okay, so today I want to talk about bearer token authentication. Now, I've already done a video on basic authentication. It was a way to um, do authentication of a web page or a, an HTTP request based on users that were created on the server. So here I want to talk about what if you have a token? What if you've got a some sort of identifying token that you've got on the server that you send to the browser, then the browser needs to use that with every subsequent request just so the server can identify you. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now, uh, JWT, this is a perfect example of a token. Um, the JWT.io website, uh, they've got a little basic example here. This is what a token looks like. So it's something like this. With JWT, there's three parts to it. There's the header, the payload, the uh, signature, and the signature includes um, some 256-bit uh, 256-bit secret uh, identifier that comes from the server, and then the header and the payload itself are base64 URL encoded. Those things all together are combined with the uh, HMAC SHA-256 algorithm, so you get something that looks like this. So I'm going to use just I copied and pasted this into my code just to have a token to use. And the requests that I'm going to make are coming to this website here, the JSON placeholder. It's just a great place to test things. If you need to do just something quick and simple to see if your request is working, I love using this site. Okay, so on my web page, what are we doing? Uh, I've got a button, and when I've got DOM content loaded, so when my page is loaded, I'm adding the click listener onto this button. When I click it, I'm going to call the send request function, and this is the one that's going to actually do my AJAX call to the JSON placeholder website. Okay, now the token. Well, I need to have a token that I can send. One of the uh, typical behaviors is you will have in local storage or in session storage, which is even better, in session storage, I'm going to be saving that token that I got. So I'm pretending that this came from the web server, this token. I'm going to save this token inside of my session storage or my local storage. Then when I make a request to the server, I'm going to go to a session storage. I'm going to get this token out and I need to include that token in my request to the server. So let's take a look at the basic fetch and then see where we could stick this inside. We've got a URL. We're going to create a headers object, and inside the headers object, this is where the token is going to go. There's a request object, which includes the URL, and then some other basic information, like are you using post or get or patch or put or delete? Uh, is it a course request? In our case, yes, it is. And then I do my fetch call. When I get the JSON data back, I take my resp response object, I take the JSON out of it, and then I get my actual data, and I'm just going to write that out in the console. I'm not doing anything with the stuff after it comes back. As always, you should always have a catch on your fetch. Okay, so just testing this, that's saved. I come in here, I click on my request button, and sure enough, there it is. There's the post, there's the request. If I click on this, this is the data that's coming back. Okay, so that is working. So I've got a basic fetch, I'm getting data, but I'm not sending any token or anything. So let's try to add that in here. Now I've got my URL, that's in my request. I need to have a token. So inside my headers object that I've created here, we say h.append. And this is just like a form data object. There's a name and a value. So the name is going to be authentication. Now this is a predefined name. We have to use this name. I can't call it something else. This is how I'm going to send the token. It's through the authentication header. And the value of it is going to be the word bearer, and it has to be this, and then a space, and then whatever our token is going to be. So I'm going to have it in a variable here, just like that. Now what I've done is I've created this header. This is the name, and the value is bearer, space, and then this token. So I could copy and paste that inside of here, but just to make it a little bit more realistic, I'm going to say token, got to spell it correctly, is session storage dot get item. And then here's my token name up here. 
or rather the key that I'm using inside of session storage. So I'm going to get this string out of session storage and I want to put it inside of here, but anything coming out of session storage, you have to make sure that you always do the json.parse. And at the end here, close that off. Okay, so my token. I'm going to session storage, I'm getting out this value, I'm parsing it, so there is going to be a string, and then I'm going to use that string right here. And that is the bulk of the work. That's most of the changes right there. Inside our options for our request object, we just have to make sure we add in headers and put our variable inside of there. Done. That is it. That is all it takes. You need to add an authentication header, bearer, and space, and then the actual token. So I'll save that. Come back here, refresh this. Click to send our request. Oh, I got an error somewhere. So that's on our, it's saying there's a problem here. Oh, of course. In the same way we have to do JSON parse here, we have to do JSON.stringify on the string when we're putting it in. So JSON.stringify and then our token. There we go. I've got an extra one here. Okay, so there we are. We're stringifying this, putting it inside session storage. That was the piece that I was missing. All right, back to network, click on our button, and there we go. There's the uh, pre-flight request, because it is a cores request, and here's the response coming back. There we have all of our data. And if we look inside the headers here, we will be able to see in our request headers, there it is, authentication, bearer, space, and then that's our token. So this is the token being sent in the headers, in the request, going off to the server. And that's it. That is the whole thing. So I've got session storage in here just to make it a little bit more realistic. But really, what it boils down to is authentication, bearer space, and then whatever the string token is that you're sending off to the server. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, I will leave a copy of this script as a code gist for you to download and play with. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.